seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Give me just a minute here, and we'll try to get this going. See if I've got this going. We've been studying wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. And I've took a few things that I thought everybody needed wisdom on. And some of this that I'm going to say tonight probably is, well, it's not, this is not going to be what I call one that each of us in here has a, a thing to go with it. But again, it does. Amen. Uh, and you'll see that when I, when I get into it, you're going to think, well, why in the world is he talking about this? Most of us in here are retired. <laughs> but that's okay. Amen. God knows what he's doing, and he, he gave me this lesson, and I do, want to, I do want to take it. So I'm going to start off right here in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. <laughs> I always, I, I th you think about what I just said right there, or, or how Solomon just said this. He's going to stand before kings and not before mean men. Now, those of us that are not, per se, working in this atmosphere today and tomorrow because of our age and we have retired from it, but let me say this, I'm still working for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I don't want to stand before mean men, but I do want to stand before my Lord, and I want to go before Him with hands that are not bloodied. Amen. I want no blood on my hands when I get to heaven and, and, and see him. Amen. So, what are we talking about here? I'm talking about I'm working for the man. <laughs> Everybody heard that before? <laughs> there have been many songs to describe the man. <laughs> Amen. I had, a, I had a little fun going back on this and looking into it and went all the way back to 1946. There's a song that came out called 16 Tons. Now, most people don't remember it back in 1946 because most of us were just toddlers. <laughs> Amen. Some of us weren't even born. Some of us wasn't even thought of. Amen. <laughs> but, but anyway, in 1955, Tennessee Ernie Ford re-recorded this song, and it made the number one charts and stayed there for six weeks. And it went something like this. It said, you load 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. <laughs> St. Peter, don't you call me because I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. <laughs> Does anybody remember that song? I do. Okay. <laughs> Whew. You load 16 tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me because I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. Now, I'm telling my age, and that's okay. But I remember that song, and it, and it was a... But anyway, the, the song, the man is the company store. Amen. Okay? But, 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 you know, what about other songs like Nine to Five by Dolly Parton's? Who working nine to five? What a way to make a living! <laughs> and, and, and then you know, a little more recent would be somebody by Kenny Chesney and George Strait, shift work. And, and then, if you really want to get down to the nutshell of it all, we can go listen to Johnny Paycheck as he says, "Take this job and shove it." <laughs> <laughs> Anybody remember that song? That was the name of it. Take this job and shove it. <laughs> in, in 1968, Creedence Clearwater Revival, I know none of y'all would understand this because, you know, we're just all been in the church forever and we don't remember them old kinds of songs. <laughs> 
I wasn't in the church always, so I remember some of these songs because it was growing up when I was a teenager, amen, early 20s. And, but I, I, but I, I, 1968, the Clear, Clearance Clearwater Revival recorded a song called Proud Mary. It came out, it became the number two hit in 1969. But I remember the Tom Jones version because Clearance Clearwater, Clearance Clearwater Revival started off by saying, I left a good job in the city. But Tom Jones started off looking for a job in the city, working for the man every night and day. <laughs> Oh, it, it just, I, I couldn't help myself. I got into this and I, I started looking at these songs and I said, wow, well, th there's a lot of songs out there because of the job. Amen? How many times have you heard, I don't think I'm getting a fair deal? Come on, anybody that's worked anywhere, anytime, somebody has said that to you. Maybe not in those exact words, but that's what they were really saying. They feel pinned down or backed into a corner with no way out. To try to, try to truly understand the thought of Solomon, let me ask this question to you. Who do you work for? Who do you work for? That's a good question. When we have a clear picture in our mind of whom we are truly working for, mm, or trying to impress, it's going to affect the way we do our jobs. Amen? Come on. I know a lot of us are not working right now, but we still got jobs around the house. Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen. But I hope by the end of this service, every one of us will have, a, it, have it so engraved in our minds of whom we actually work for and it will motivate us to take action every time we go do a job. Amen. Praise God. I'm talking about from answering the telephone to interacting with coworkers, from uh, dealing with unreasonable customers or dealing with uh, uh, unhelpful suppliers, from standing in customers' offices or warehouses to sitting at your desk filling out a bunch of ridiculous papers, amens, and reports, or from just making up the beds and dinner for an unappreciated bunch of people. <laughs> Somebody say Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so let's look at let's let's go into this a little bit here. Let's start off in Ephesians chapter six, verses five through eight. It, it, it's stated here: Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. Now, did you get that? It's according to the flesh that I'm talking about here, and with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Amen. Not with eye service or men ple pleasures, uh, pleasers, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Amen. Knowing that whatever good thing any man doth, the same shall he receive of the Lord whether he be bond or free. Now, everybody, is there anybody in here that's not free? Anybody owe anybody any, anything? You're not free. <laughs> You're bond. You're bound to them. Amen. <laughs> or, are you catching what I'm trying to say here? We've got to look at this in realistic effort atmosphere here and that's what I'm trying to get so all of us in one way or another I, I, I like for example I, I, I know when I picked up my wife's car I, I didn't want to throw that much money at it so they let me have it with zero percent interest and I said well that's pretty doggone good let me get my money in there still make a little bit of money and I can pay it every month uh, so I I'm bound to Everybody at one time or another is bound by car payment. Anybody owe rent? How about a house payment? Anybody have utilities? 
I'm going to get everybody in here for us over, so you might as well get over it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so let's, let's look at this in, this, in this in this idea, okay? Let's go to Colossians 3 and 23. And whom, whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Amen. Knowing that the Lord, uh, that, that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doth wrong shall receive the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. I come stand in here for the pastor, and I know I've got to do a good job. And, and, and it's not so much, I, I, am I trying to please the pastor? No, I'm trying to please God. But, but, but here's another deal too. I want the pastor to be pleased with the way that not just the words I bring, but the way I present it. Because I can get up here and I can make every one of you hate me before we walk out of here teaching on some of these things. Amen? <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> You see, no matter who we work for, as servants of God, we really work for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I work for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Proverbs tells us that God wants to succeed in work. In fact, it contains a promise in it, and it's found in Proverbs 16 and 3. And it says this, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The message Put it out like this. Put God in charge of your work, then what you've planned will take place. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The only way to have our thoughts established is to commit our works to Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Roll the burden of your care from yourself upon God. I don't know about you. I've been doing that for a long time. Amen. Amen. You know, lay the matter before him in prayer. Amen. Amen. Make your known your works unto the Lord. Don't, don't, don't hold it back. Let him know you what problems that you're having. He's going to help you through these situations. Not only the works of your hand, but the workings of your heart. And then leave it with him. I don't like my boss at work. Well, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> they won't let me do my job right. Oh, Pastor. <laughs> you, 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 you see, but what we have to understand is we're not doing it for them. We're doing it for Almighty God. We can rest easy when we res resolve that whatever pleases God is going to please us. Amen. I'm not here to please man. Amen. When we get that part in our mind, now that don't mean go out there and, you know, just scald them up one side and down the other. No, 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 no. no. Oh, God didn't, he, he says for us, well, I'll get a little bit further. There is warnings about laziness. And we see this in, in Proverbs 10 and 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a, slack hand, with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. And we also know that he, t he tilleth his hand, land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that flow, uh, followeth vain persons is void of understanding. And he didn't stop there. He went again. He said, he also that is slothful, in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. <laughs> now the first week we talked about the fact that Proverbs is a book of consequences. Everything we do has consequences. I wish this generation would learn they have consequences with what they do and what they say. Amen. I, my children knew there was consequences with what they did and what they said. Sometime today, I don't believe some children understand that. Somebody's got it in their mind that, 
Well, if I spank them, they're going to go run to the social worker. Well, let them run to it. There's a law here in Texas that says you can spank them kids. <laughs> I, I, am I wrong, Pastor? You, hey, hey, that's that's the police. Can you imagine coming to my house? I spanked him. Will you put your hand? Mm-mm. You can spank him. Dr. Seuss, you ain't no good. People grow up without discipline. Their children are totally undisciplined. My, my, my. I better hush. I didn't come in here to talk about that. (laughs) Behavior produces corresponding results is what I'm trying to say. Nowhere in life is it more true than that in our work life. I mean, actual work life. Amen. Come on, all of us in here at one time had a, had, a, had a job we had to go to on a daily basis and all this, and there's times that we just drudged our way in there. But I'm going to tell you, you shouldn't be doing that because you're not doing it for that man. I'm not working for the man. I'm working for the man. Amen. I'm working for Almighty God. Hallelujah. So when I do everything, I need to do it a little bit better. In in Proverbs chapter 14 and 23, we read this. It says this. In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to punery. Punery. Anybody know what that is? Poverty. Poverty. Amen. The American Standard Version says it like this. In all labor there is profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. (laughs) We all know people who have worked their fingers to the bone all their life, and they're still dirt poor. Come on now. I I, I could have, I guess I could have said that a little little easier, but but really and truly, that's, that's the word, dirt poor. Amen. The biggest part of that has to do with money management. Oh, help me, Jesus. Man, any time we start talking about money, you can feel it. It went all the way here from this pocketbook all the way up to this brain. It says, mm, don't you talk about money. Well, I can't help myself. The biggest part of being dirt poor is money management. They want the same things that we that have been working for a long time and have retired and we don't have to do all that anymore and we have the money to be able to have the things that we want because we did without when we were growing up. Oh, help me, Jesus. Come on, look at me and smile. We buy things we don't need and then we don't have enough money for the things we need. That's why you're dirt poor. We have more bills at the end of the month than we have money. Why? Well, I just had to have that Coke. No, you didn't. Well, that's a Coke. Start adding them up. You have two Cokes a day, that's, that's 60 bucks a month. That's a lot of rent money. Come on now. Okay. I, I know young people don't want to hear this. I, I, that's, that's fine. I, but, but let me move on. This is not about money. So, See, we have a tendency to blame God when it's our fault spending the money that we need for life. Right. Right. Amen. Oh, God, you promised me that if I asked, you'd give it to me. Well, I gave you the job, son. You got your money, son. You spent it wrong, son. (laughs) Woo! My, 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 my. We buy things we don't need. Another part has to do with the fact that there's just not a, you know, it's not just enough to break your back on the job. <laughs> and, and let me tell you something. Hard-working jobs pay a lot of money. 
electricians, plumbers. They're not, they're, not, they're not the kind of jobs where you got air conditioner and do all those. They're, they're jobs where they got to work at it. So they get paid for their labor. Amen. Amen. There's more than working hard than just producing sweat. I, I'm sorry. Perspired. <laughs> God wants to bless your job. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on. I don't care if it's whatever it may be. Amen. Let's look at things that we can do that will give him the opportunity to bless you. I'm talking about God. Amen. Why do you do the job that you do? There's a good question, right? Is it because of the pay? Quit complaining. Is that the only reason? Money alone is never sufficient motivation for work. No one expects you to work free. Amen. The only reason you work is to get a paycheck. It will soon become obvious to everyone you work with and work for. A boss doesn't want an employee who wants to be there only for the paycheck. I had them that worked for me. They didn't like me. Ooh, how can you be that way being a Christian and, and you being a, a, a pastor and doing all I can tell you how I can do it. God says, you know, you're supposed to use your hands to do this and you don't like a slacker. You're a slacker. Amen. <laughs> Woo, did he say that? Yeah, he did. One of the wor hardest working people that I had in my office was my secretary. God bless her. She was a jewel, let me tell you. But there was t one time period there where she was giving me a fit about this and did fit about that. And I just looked at her and I said, well, let me tell you this. If, if, if I have to do your work, I don't need you. What do you think about that? <laughs> Woo! Look out. Let's, let's, let's get this back into where we need to be. Let's, let's talk about three ways you can fine-tune your motivation to work. Amen? i, I got to get going or I'm not going to make it. Your job is an opportunity to serve God. Somebody say amen. amen. Working is not a curse. It's a blessing. There's a lot of people out there that would like to work but can't work. They can't work because of handicaps or other things like this. Folks, let me tell you right now, this is not... Something that we just fall off the tree and say that's the way it is. Work is not a waste of time. It's an opportunity to serve God. God would not design things in such a way that you have to spend half your working hours in futility. In other words, he's going to. We we don't need to just be running around in a big old circle. I always hated it when they when they gave us something and knew good and well it wasn't going to do anything but go around in a big old circle and come back to where it was and nothing happened. I hated that. Does it happen? Yeah, it does. Whatever you do for a living, you can perform your job as an act of service to God, and He receives it. And He rewards it. Not your boss. Come on now. My boss is Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've already read Colossians 3 and 23. However, in today's English version, it goes something like this. Whatever you do, work, it, work at it with all your heart, as though you were working for the Lord and not for men. Yeah. Amen. We understand that we, must, we, we work for human beings. We understand this. If you're self-employed, your boss is anybody that tries to order something from you. Yeah. Anytime somebody walks into your place, because you're the boss... They become your boss because you're trying to serve them. Amen. Right. Amen. If you're self-employed, that's all there is to it. However, when you go to the job, it's sometimes we, we got to get it on a spiritual level, I guess is what I'm trying to say. We go in there in the, in the human form, and we're disgusted with everything. We don't like the work. We don't like the pay. We don't like the people we work with. Come on now. Mm. But I like who I work for. Amen. And that's what I used to tell my employees. Hey, listen, we're here to serve. 
If you don't want to serve, you came into the wrong job. Amen. When people come in that door, we serve them. As simple as that. Uh, even when I was in the service, I remember being uh, sitting down and I was teaching a young man who just came out of school and, and he's down there. And I'm, I'm sitting, I was a, I was a, a master sergeant at the time. And uh, I'm sitting there and he says, well, how, I said, I want you to start visiting the people that are coming in. And when they come in, I want you to treat them like the, with the most respect that you can. Uh, he's, I said, here, watch this. I'll take the next person who walks in. In walks a person coming from training that has no rank at all. He's an E1. He just came out of training. He's an E1. He hadn't even made E2 yet. I stand up, spread my hand, and say, Hey, I'm Sergeant Samuels. Welcome. What can I do for you, sir? And when the guy left, the young man that was with me was a two striper. He was an E3. He says, You called him, sir. And I said, Yeah, I don't have trouble calling officers, sir, when they walk in. <laughs> sure. He's my customer. I'm here to serve him. I'm not serving his rank. I'm serving him. Right. Hard lessons are hard lessons. So let your motivation be of God. Amen. Number two. What did you do? Help. Amazing. I hit it a second time and it came back on. I don't know what you did. You probably didn't do anything. You're wondering too. Yeah, I, I know. I, I got you. No problem. Love these things. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. See, I know who my boss is. Amen. Your job is an opportunity to serve others. Amen. Okay. We're working for God. That's our first opportunity. The second is to serve others. Amen. Every job benefit, benefits other people. Amen. I don't care what you do, you're benefiting somebody else. Yeah, you're right. Amen. Taking pleasure in the fact that you get paid to help people should make you feel good. Amen. <laughs> there's, there's something incredibly satisfying about serving others. In serving others, we show respect for the work of Christ on our behalf. Amen. In, in Galatians 5 and 3, we re, read 13, we read this. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the, to, to the flesh, but by love serve one another. We're doing what God asks us to every time we serve somebody. And every time we're in any kind of job doing anything, we're serving God. Hallelujah. So... Let that ser you know, serving others be a motivation for your work. Amen. Perhaps you aren't getting paid as much as you'd like to get. Everybody in here say amen. <laughs> Still, you get paid for what should be amount to be serving God and serving others. You are being paid. Amen. Amen. It gives you an opportunity to support your family, own a home, own transportation, eat, travel, and enjoy a particular hobby. Amen. I went without a hobby for a long time. Why? Couldn't afford it. Because I had to pay bills. <laughs> you're not doing your boss a favor when you show up for work. You're doing what you're getting paid to do. Amen. In fact, you're getting paid can contribute to your motivation. In Proverbs, uh, or excuse me, uh, where, did, where did I go here? I did. I'm, I'm sorry. We're going to go. Have I, have I already passed it? I have. I'm sorry. We're going to go right to, to give you. Uh, uh, your job gives you an opportunity to serve yourself. Because we serve ourselves, we serve others. Amen. And we serve God as well. Amen. In Proverbs 16 and 26, we read this. It says this here. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. What did that say? Well, look at the message. It'll give you a little more. It says, appetite is an incentive to work. Hunger makes you work all the harder. 
<laughs> I know what it's like to be hungry. Somebody will look at me today and say, I don't believe that. Well, I'm telling you, I know what it's like to be hungry. I'm not always where I am today. Amen. Thank God. God has helped me get, get there. But be sure, need is the primary incentive for any man to work or any person to work. I, I don't know how to do this anymore. And I use God's word, man means man and woman, you know. But some people get offended if I just say man. Well, whew, he made man. Male and female, he made he them. That's my word, amen. <laughs> Listen, if, you, if you're still working... Go to your job tomorrow with a new incentive. You're serving God and others, and your attitude concerning your job will change. Amen. There must be a commitment to quality in your work in order to, for God to be blessed, to bless you on the, on the job. Proverbs 22 and 29. This is the New King James Version. Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Okay. We talk about the mean man, remember? I want to stand before kings, the king of kings. Amen. If you don't want, a, 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 if you want to be a supervisor tomorrow, you have to work like it today. Amen. If you want to succeed, you have to start working like it as if you were already successful. Amen. How our church operates today will directly affect how it operates in a month, in a year, and ten years from now. Amen. If organization and preparation and desire to offer God our best are not important, think about what I'm saying here, if it's not important in our services, they won't suddenly and miraculously happen 10 years down the line. They're important today. We need to operate like a revival church, a growing church. Like, for example, this lesson here. A lot of us, like I say, are retired. You may not think this is important to you, but it is. If you listen to whom we're working for, amen. Because we're talking about doing things in church as well, okay? Okay. You know, if we're, if we're a revival church, you know, you know, how are we, quit worrying about it in the future if we're not one now. Amen. Corporate, uh, corporately, as a church, we're not a business. But we are an assembly made up of human beings just like any business in the world. And there are things that need to be taken care of just like any business. We didn't get this air free. We don't get this light free. We didn't get this sanctuary free or the upkeep of the sanctuary. We didn't get this new microphone. You, you know, it was, none of this was free. Amen. So it's got to run in some ways like a business, but my business is Jesus. Amen. Let, let, how, how, what are you trying to say? Well, do, do, you like, do you like a business place where the people don't seem to act like you're important when you walk in? How do you think they feel when they walk in here? That's just a question. Pastor, if I'm out of line, stop me. But I'm, I'm talking a little older here. Have you ever noticed that every visitor that comes in, I take time to go visit them? Amen. Amen. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. Phew. Why? Because it's about business. What business? Jesus' business. Amen. Amen. Some, when they come in this church, the only Jesus they're going to see is you. Right. Amen. We've got to act like we're, they're important. They are important every time they walk in here. We've got to treat them that way. Amen. Am I right, Pastor? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't like going to restaurants where you get people that are ready for their shift to be over and they don't care whether they stop and wait on you or not. 
Well, I wouldn't give them a tip. Well, that's where you're wrong. I give them a bigger tip. Why? Next time I walk in, they'll remember me. <laughs> it works. You can say anything you want to. It works. The, when, when, they first, when they first meet you, you know, you, they don't know you and they don't know where you're going to give them a tip or anything and, 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 and they just kind of methodically do things and the, then you stop and you ask them a question or two and just talk to them and, you know, are, are you going to school over here or are you doing this? Come on, it's okay to do that with these people. What are you saying? I'm witnessing. And my tip is a witness. <laughs> I know you might not want to tip that person, but tip them anyway. And if, if they didn't do a good job, give them a little bit more. And the next time you walk in, oh, I remember them. They know how to take care of people. I'm going to go take care of them. How you treat people is how you get treated, folks. That's the same with them coming into this sanctuary. Amen. I want to make sure that they understand we want them welcomed into this church. Amen. Uh, amen. If we're not careful, we're going to come to church and do the same, very same thing for the Lord. I'm, that's the reason why I got on this, uh, as I would the restaurant person. You see what I'm saying? We can't do that. If, if we need to reach out and encourage visitors and, and, and not worry about what we're going to have for lunch. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I challenge all of us to stop right now and realize every time we gather here, it's a big deal. You're right. You're right. It's a big deal. Right. Ooh, I come to see my God. Hallelujah. I came to be with like people of like faith. Amen. I come so I can reach out and touch Him in the midst of the people. Ooh, hallelujah. Everything is important in church. Everything is important in church. Brother Jesse, you go working outside, and I know you've been asking me to come mow that lawn with you again. I'm, I, boy, I, 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 I know you're not as old as me, but you're old enough to know how, how we feel. <laughs> let, me, let me ask this. If, if something's not important now, when will it become important? When you get to heaven? My, what do you think our boss is going to say when we get there and we didn't feel it was important when we were here? Okay, I'm moving on. Let me move on. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, here's a good analogy. An old football coach once said, you play the game on the weekend like you practice during the week. Amen? Amen. If we don't think what we're doing right now is very important to our future, we're, gonna, we're tragically mistaken is what I'm trying to say. It is our commitment to have an impact on this community, is it not? Yes. Amen. We can't have an impact on this community if we don't think it's important. I don't know. It is our desire to be a beacon of light for these people here. That's why we've got those lights setting up out there. Amen. There, there's a lot of reasons why we do these things. Amen. Praise God. Let me, let me move on so I can get through this thing. Uh, if you work in an environment that does not reward quali uh, uh, quality, remember you're working for the Lord. He does reward. Amen. What, what they lack, He'll make up for. Uh-huh. In, in double measure. Amen. You're working for people you serve and you're working for yourself. That makes a commitment to quality, worth, and effort no matter what we do. Amen? Another quality of uh, every child of God should possess is being diligent. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Bear rule is actually have power. Let me try that again. The hand of the diligent shall have power. The slothful 
they're going to have trouble. <laughs> Got it? The New Living Translation says, work hard and become a leader. Be, be lazy and become a slave. There you go. Amen. Diligence at work determines success and advancement. To put it bluntly, the diligent rise to the top and the lazy sink to the bottom. My, my, my. Somebody say amen. 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 Cal Ripken Jr. was a good shortstop. He's not the best that ever played the game of baseball, but he was a very good shortstop. And he became a legend not because of his great play or his great hitting skills or anything like this, but he became a legend because he was there every time. He still has a record of the longest that he's played in every game. Think about it. People get hurt. They have this trouble. They have that trouble. But he has the record for the one to be relied upon. Now, don't get me wrong. He was very brilliant at times. But he was like me and you. One day we could be very brilliant. The next day we can be very mediocre. <laughs> Ooh. Do you want God to bless your job? Be diligent. Be consistent. Pay consistent attention to detail. Jesus illustrates this in Luke Chapter 16 and verse 10, he says this, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Faithful is, is equivalent to diligent, if you want to put it there like that. Okay. There's something to be said for sticking to it. Solomon said this in Proverbs 21 and 5. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to be, uh, tend only to plenteous, but out of every one that is hasty, only want. Amen. I want what's plenteous. What's diligent? Diligent is sticking with something day in, day out, doing your job consistently the same way, day after day, week after week, year after year. That's diligent. It's monotonous. I was blessed. I served people. People, don't let it get monotonous. <laughs> One might come in, give you all kinds of flowery words and do all kinds of things like a one come in and they're cursing you up one side and down the other because they didn't get what they asked for and I wasn't the one that could give it to them but they I wasn't at the point they were there and I was in I, I, I they were there and I was in front of them and they're going to let me have it so believe me I do understand what it's like amen Whew. Little things we do at work. Come on, little things. Every, every day testify to our employer and our co-workers showing consistently that we're on time, we dress appropriately, we act energetically toward our job. Amen. The Lord knows every motive that causes you to do what we do but humans don't, so they don't have a clue. Consistently or diligence in our attitude and behavior is what they look for. Talking about humans. Amen. You may work with a lot of people. There was days that they're the greatest it ever was. They even outdo you when it comes to greeting and meeting. But that's just an outburst on one day. It's not day in and day out, day in and day out. Amen. 
We should not be like that. Flashes of brilliance will never take the place of day-to-day consistency. Somebody say amen. The Lord wants us, listen, listen, listen. Diligence, consistency lead to plenteous, to bounty, to abundance. But the fly-by-night attitude leads to want and dissatisfaction. I don't care whether we're working at the work or working here at the church. That holds truth. The Lord wants us to be successful in these troubled times. He really does. He wants us to be successful. But we have to be wise. That's the reason why I had to put this under, you know, Lord, give me wisdom. We have to become wise. To be wise in an area of our lives, we have to look to the source of wisdom. And when it comes to work, God wants to bless your job. Everybody say amen. 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 His word says that we should work together with proper motives, with desire and quality, with great diligence. The business axiom in lifetime is work harder, not um, uh, uh, smarter, not harder. There's a lot to that, okay? Working smarter involves more than long and hard hours and lots of sweat. It involves keeping your priorities in line. That's really what it comes down to. Keeping Christ first and foremost. Amen. Working to minister to others because that's what you're doing when you're serving them. Amen. Keeping it, well, day in and day out. If you do this, you have his guarantee that your work will be pleasing to him and be meaningful. What I want to say here. Make quality work a priority. If you do this, you have his guarantee that your work will be pleasing to him and meaningful to you. Amen. What are you saying, Brother Samuels? Put God first. Begin to put wisdom to work in your life today and immerse yourself in his wisdom. Somebody say amen. Amen. Why don't we stand? Let's just open up to him again one more time. Come on, we need to feel after him one more time.